In a world that often moves at lightning speed, some individuals find themselves navigating through life with a unique set of challenges. Meet Dorcas Laie, a software engineer living with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. Her journey sheds light on the experiences of countless others who grapple with the complexities of this condition. So I got my diagnosis the first time was in the university. It wasn't for ADHD. However, it came up during COVID. Um, I had, I dealt with a very traumatic um, 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 incident. It was like a robbery. And so one of my friends decided that, hey, would you want to like talk to a therapist about it and all of that? And so it was during my sessions and all of that, that it came up. And then I got my diagnosis from there, like officially. Dorcas's journey is one of resilience and self-discovery. Her story unveils the hidden struggles faced by individuals living with ADHD, a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by difficulties with attention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. ADHD affects people of all ages, though symptoms often manifest in childhood and persist into adulthood. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, approximately 140 million of adults worldwide have persistent ADHD from childhood, which includes individuals who experienced childhood onset paired with continued ADHD symptoms into adulthood. Dokata's symptoms, like those experienced by many with ADHD, extend beyond mere distractions. Sensory sensitivities and difficulty with routine and structure compound the challenges she faces in daily life. I struggle with my focus a lot. So um, even when I have to like sit and like pay attention and do something, for example, work or anything, my attention tends to waver a lot so much that something that would, let's say, take someone, let's say, an hour to do, it could take me like three or four or even longer. I become very irritable. Um, also, so for me, I have like sensory um, issues. So you see when I was coming in, I was wearing my headset because I feel like everywhere is noise. I also have sensory issues like with touch. To gain deeper insight into ADHD and its management, I spoke with Dr. Zaman, a clinical psychiatrist with the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. It has three components, inattention, hyperactivity, and a part that is not in the name, but that is impulsivity. So the diagnosis for ADHD uh, requires the presence of either of these two and impulsivity. Uh, this diagnosis criteria differs based on the one whichever doctor is using. He emphasized the importance of accurate diagnosis and personalized treatment plans tailored to each individual's needs. This also has some uh, degree of cultural influence. So what a child who probably grew up in, say, a community like Nima will do, or a child who grew up somewhere in Labuani will do, are going to differ. So if uh, anybody is using just one size fits all to try and diagnose these children, we are going to either overdiagnose or underdiagnose. And that is one of the major challenges when it comes to ADHD diagnosis. Treatment for ADHD typically involves a combination of medication, behavioral therapy, and lifestyle medication. Dorcas' journey serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Through perseverance and support, she has learned to navigate the challenges of ADHD with grace and determination. Her story reminds us of the importance of empathy, understanding, and community in facing life's obstacles. Imano Samani, TV3 News.